good morning friends today we will start with your new module that is second module FET that is field effect transistor we will just go through some of the character what how the transistor behaves in n, trans, uh, n channel as well as the p channel okay always FET will be having three terminals okay always if it is having three terminals gate source and drain always gate will be represented by g source will be by s and drain will be by d okay now the fet can be classified as two parts that is j fet and mosfet okay j represents your junction fet and mos represents your metal oxide semiconductor fet so once again this j fet can be divided into n channel as well as p channel in the same platform mosfet in a enhancement mode and depletion mode once again in enhancement will be having n channel as well as p channel now we'll just go through the junction fet that is j fet n channel basic structure how the operation will be just carried out okay so this one is your j fet basic structure as we know already that jfet will be having three terminals that is gate drain and source so this one is your gate region drain and source since it is a n channel jfet n channel means always the source should be placed below and drain should be placed above and the gate will be always at the b side okay since s is here drain and gate now the drain and source are being connected by using your wired led in the same fashion the gate is also being connected by your wired led where the n channel is being formed when it is being diffused between two p type material whenever the when it is being diffused between two p type material the n channel is being formed okay so the dark region whatever is forming is your depletion so this will be just increasing or decreasing since it is a basic structure it is being stated in this pattern whenever we apply the gate voltage or the between the drain and source this depletion region will enhance or decrease okay depending upon that the channel formation whether it might be higher or it might be lower okay that is been depend so this one is the basic structure where it is the source is placed below since it is a n channel drain is being placed above and two gate see here the two p regions the two p diffuse materials have been joined by using the gate so this the dotted lines are been the internal structure okay and this one is the basic symbol of a n channel jfet okay gate drain and source of a n channel n channel means always the source should be placed below and the drain should be placed above and this one is see here, the flow of direction since electrons are the majority charge carriers in n channel the flow of direction will be inside as the flow of the electrons will be flowing towards the source so the flow of direction is been so uh, depending upon this flow of direction we can just tell it as n channel or a p channel if the flow of uh, direction is the flow of electrons direction is inside then it is known as your n channel j fet okay now we'll just change the <laughs> structure from this symbolic form okay see now operation of n channel j fet okay see here. the n channel whatever is being formed is just taken in a form and source and drain are in place and we are just applying a voltage drain source that is a power supply that is id so the flow of applying catch of current we'll getting is the flow of direction id okay this n channel is been replaced by you now the electrical equivalent that is by changing the n channel to a resistance value okay that is rds drain and source the same voltage supply has been applied in the flow of direction okay now since it's a n channel i already will that are the majority charge carriers okay since the flow of direction towards the source so it will be having the the in the at the source channel the electrons will be just entering and at the drain channel just leave the drain okay and this obeys the as the voltage increases the current also increases proportionally so this one will be obeying the ohms law that is if voltage v increases and current i increases proportionally okay now what we will do is we will just go through the basic structure for that we will be just mentioning the two cases when one is when gate source 
now by placing the gate region constant and drain and source that is VDS will be variable and another second case is both the gate as well as the drain to source voltage will be variable okay the first condition when VGS is equal to zero that is it is made constant that is it is being grounded and VDS is being varying that is the varying voltage okay when VGS is equal to zero volts and VDS greater than zero PN junction are reverse bias so PN junction in the depletion region is being formed here so this is means so the diffusion part is being expanded here okay so this part as well as this part is being so this part is known as the depletion wherever there is a increase in the length that is the channel is been now going on reducing at the drain then the flow of channel or the flow of electrons will be just reduced okay so this one is known as your channel and the, since it is been increased so this one is known as your depletion region okay the depletion region width increases with the magnitude of reverse bias that is vds increases the depletion width increases as we go on increasing the vds value the depletion region channel length goes on increasing and it becomes narrow it becomes narrow and the see next points close to the drain are at a higher positive potential than point close to the source because the direction the region is been becoming less so it will be at a positive resistance and the okay next next at the fourth one so this one is the transfer characteristics how it is been obeyed as soon as the voltage increases the current also increases okay until what this voltage that is vp so this one is known as your ohmic means this obeys the ohms law as the voltage increases the current also increases proportionally so this one is part is known as the ohmic later what will be at this point vp means the pinch of voltage that is at this point the current will be in a constant it so it will be in a constant so this part is known as the saturation part and later it goes on breakdown so this part is known as the breakdown as the reverse voltage increases the breakdown voltage will be starting so this one is known as the vb okay next see if, if vd is gradually increased zero volts id is also increased because channel behaves as resistance obeys the ohms law so this part that is the ohmic region as the voltage increases the current also it, it is been obeying the ohms law. that is the pro voltage is proportional to current id okay next if vds is further increased id begins to leave off until the specific value of which the current that is the region where the current remains relatively constant is called pinch off or the saturation region see here so here the current is in a constant value so this part from vp to vb is known as your pinch off or the saturation in the same fashion when vds exceeds the vb the breakdown takes place in id rays where rays as shown in the dotted lines so this one is part as once again the vds is been exceeds the vb value at that part the breakdown voltage takes place okay so this one is when vgs is being placed constant and vds is being variable okay the next condition is what when both vgs is also variable as well as vds is also variable means we will be just going on increasing both the value so here we will be getting this kind of so at that point only one characteristic for what one vgs was been zero volts so this one is the current volume so as we go on increasing the value that is here it is been grounded that is minus two plus okay it is a negative this one so at this point when vgs equal zero volts next at vgs is equal to minus one what is happening and vgs minus two minus two as well as minus four is been that the same as that the vds later it will be what the same so this one is the current of id versus vds for different vga value okay see here pinch off occurs at a lower vds when the gate to source voltage vgs is increased to more negative values in the same pass for any fixed value of vds the channel becomes more and more narrow as vgs is more and more negative as we go on increasing the means it will be coming at the vgs value okay so the first graph what it is been mentioning is that the first thing is when vgs is equal to zero volts so what it is means when it is vgs was been zero at the previous state okay next as we go on increasing the value since we are checking the negative value see the source has been changed minus two plus here so when vgs to minus one so it will be reduced from zero volt so in the same fashion as we go on increasing means it will be at the constant volume it will be nearing to a vds 
okay now we'll just go through the characteristics of n j f t okay so this one is the previous graph what you are just writing in the drain characteristics that is the ohmic law pinch off region as well as the breakdown as we go on increasing the voltage because by we taking the both constant uh, by both variable values that vgs value as well as vd yes at the vgs is equal to zero where break the voltage and vgs is minus as with the breakdown voltage goes on reducing and this part is known as your cut off region see here as we go on reducing the uh, reducing the vgs voltage that is minus 1 minus the breakdown voltage also goes on decreasing here and this one here at the point as we still to further then it is known as your cut off region okay so this one is what previously explained the same thing that is cut off means gf it is off so this one is the and that is it is equal to zero so at this point the cut off region then next ohmic law that is gf it obeys the ohms law next pinch off means here the id will be what at a constant voltage next breakdown voltage means what jft loses ability to control id so there is no having any control over the current id okay next so these are the transfer characteristics that is of plot of vgs and vd by making the vds constant here in this we have made the vgs constant at the initial condition then we have varied the vgs value now we are making what vds constant so at this one is at vds is equal to 0 volts what will be getting vds is equal to 1 volts and vds is equal to 1 so okay, next so these are the important two formulas what will be getting the square law expression for your id okay so this one is the important formula and you should be remembering this that id is equal to id s is into 1 minus vgs by vgs of that is the whole square so okay for this one is the id next for pinch off region so this one is the constant voltage what will so this one is the constant voltage what will be just taking so for this the expression changes to what id is equal to ids is into 1 minus by vgs by vp okay that is one that is the vp at this point what it is the thing that is what id is equal to ids is into 1 minus vgs by vp whole square in the same fashion if you want to get for the vgs then the formula reduces to what vp into square root of 1 minus id by id yes so this one is the square law expression and this one is the important formula okay next so this one is your input resistance always already know that the resistance is what r is equal to v by r so in the same fashion r is equal to vgs by ig yes so vertical line indicates the absolute value so this one is just what the what voltage is equal to v is equal to i into r that is current into resistance okay now we'll just go through the problems of a n channel jft okay so this one is the first problem what they are given is for for n channel jft ids is equal to 8 milliamps vp is equal to minus 5 volts and so we should determine that is we should calculate for id at vgs is equal to minus 2 and minus 3 volts and vgs is at id is equal to 3 milliamps and so this one is the thing what they have been given okay next so what we should be calculating is so we should calculate for the first thing is what id okay so the id means so its formula is idss into 1 minus vgs by vp so what are the given values will be just contained will be just getting through okay for vgs is equal to minus 2 volts that is my minus 2 for, for the first bit what will you can put for minus 2 volts okay so just putting id is equal to idss is given that is 8 milliamps so into 1 minus vgs is given as minus 2 and all dvp is given it as minus 5 and if we just calculate the whole, whole square is equal to we will be getting it as 2.88 milliamps okay in the same fashion for vds is vgs is equal to minus 3 volts if we get the put in the value we will be getting it as 1.28 milliamps okay instead of minus 2 if you just place it as minus 3 will be getting it as 1.28 milliamps okay next for the same thing if you just calculate for the current id see here for the second one vgs at id is equal to what 3 milliamps and final first we will be calculating for 3 milliamps in the same formula that is id is equal to idss into 1 minus vgs by vp whole square so id is given as 3 milliamps so 3 into 8 into 1 minus vgs by VP, VP is what your minus 5 volts okay so you should calculate for the VGS okay so if you just go on solving this one so you'll be getting it as VGS is equal to what 1 plus 0.2 VGS is equal to plus or minus 0.6 1 2 
three. So we'll just calculate for with the VGS. If you just go on adding and plus, plus so you'll we'll be getting it as plus or minus. So plus as well as a minus will be just will be getting it as VGS equal to minus one point nine four as well as minus eight point zero six four as minus eight point zero six four is two. Greater than value, so it is been VGS. We will be taking it as VGS is equal to minus one point nine four volts. Okay, if you just substitute the values, you will be getting this one, and you should calculate for the VGS. Okay, so if you just take, so we'll be having two values, plus or minus. So if you just solve it, that is VGS is equal to plus point six one two three minus one divided by point two. If I just do it. So we'll be getting it as minus one point nine four. If the same thing, minus point six one two into minus one divided by point. If I just give to you, you'll be getting it as minus eight point six volts. Since point eight point is being greater than value of VP, so we'll be getting it as VGS is equal to minus one point. Okay. In the same fashion, you can just calculate for the ID is equal to five milliamp. So we'll be getting the value it as VGS is equal to minus one point zero. So you can just solve it by using the same formula as well as the Same steps. Try to solve it. Okay. Next, the problem two. Okay. So this one is very simple here. A JF it is operated at Q point. That is, they are given all the values. ID instead ID they are given they are given at a Q point means so they are given it as ID is equal to four milliamps and VGS is equal to minus three volts. So they should determine the IDSS if VP is equal to minus. So all the values will be given. That is, VP will be given, ID value will be given as well as VGS will be given. So you should calculate for the What ID is this? So we already we know that the formula that ID is equal to ID is equal to one minus VGS by VP whole square. Put all the values which are given values. Okay, and if you just calculate ID is this, you'll be getting it as sixteen milli amps. Okay, next. Now, so this one is very much important. Normally, it has been asked in your exams too. Just that, that is, sketch the transfer characteristics of N channel JFT given that IDSS is equal to 12 milliamps and VP is equal to minus 6 volts. Okay, this this one is the means. So you should draw draw the transfer characteristics. Oh, so we know that all the formula is what we have. ID is equal to IDSS into 1 minus VGS by VP whole square. Okay, since here VP is equal to minus 6 volts, so you should get the, all the values from 0 to Minus six. So if you get go on in taking the values for ID, that is VP value will be just variable. That is minus six volts. Okay. So we should put the values from zero, minus one, minus two until minus six, and we'll just calculate it. Okay. If we just get the values when VGS is equal to zero volts. Okay. So what the ID will be getting is what twelve milliamps. In the same fashion, if we just calculate the values for VGS, that is minus one. Minus two, minus three, until minus since, since because since VP is okay. We'll just uh, put the formula in this. ID is what ID is not minus VGS. We'll we just vary the value VGS value from zero to minus six volts. Okay. So when we put the values, that is constant value ID is twelve million and VP is minus one. If we just go on changing the VGS at zero, we'll be getting it as twelve volts. At minus one, we'll be getting it as 8.33. Like this, if we calculate until minus six, that is, we'll just go on varying the VGS value by keeping it as VP as minus six. We'll be getting this characteristics graph. Okay, so when it is zero, we'll be getting it as 12, and when it is minus one, so means so these are the points. What we should be remembering at what 8.33 is the meeting. What the dotted lines? Okay. When so at minus six volts it is zero so that is at minus six it is been zero so this was main transfer characteristics and these are the points when they will be getting the point okay that is at minus five at minus four it will be getting at minus three it is what three milliamps and minus two it is point one through like this we will be getting the values okay for zero it is twelve so for twelve minus one it is eight point three three so we are getting it as eight point three three at minus two it is five point three three okay the same pattern minus three it is Three minus four it is one point three three minus five it is point three three and minus six it is zero zero. So this one is the so we are just varying the VGS value VGS value from zero to minus so so this one is the transfer characteristics graph of the given problem. Okay now in the same fashion for the P channel J F D T same as your N channel that is it is having also the same gate drain and Source only thing is, it is diffused in a N type material with a P channel. Okay, it is same. Here the holes of the majority 
carrier so so this one is a symbolic diagram here it is same as the symbolic diagram only the flow of direction was inside in a n channel but in p channel the flow of direction of a force will be altered so this one is the representation of a n channel symbol okay see here and next so this one is the basic structure so this is the depletion regions so it is being diffused in between the two n type materials and the connections will be same as your drain and source from your LEDs as well as the gates will be connected and this one is the internal connection between the two diffused n type material okay and so this one is the basic structure of a p channel jfet okay so we are just taking it as vgs is positive and vds is negative vps is being positive so this is the transfer characteristics what will be getting it is same as the previously for a nft that is ideator vdss so here there there is a vgs was been taken it as a negative value so here it will be taken from for the positive value vgs is equal to 0 volts 1 volt vgs plus 2 volts are vgs it is same plus for and so this one is the cable so it's a characteristics and all those will be same as for the n time only the directions will be changed from negative to positive the positive to negative so there it was for negative values and here we are calculating for the okay at zero the same thing so it is for the ohmic region until vp because it's always the ohms law that is the way voltage varies according to the current or current varies according to the so linearly okay next so after things so it will be in a saturation regime the vgs will be that is the current id will be constant and later so when they break down so next in the breakdown region so this one is your transfer characteristics of p channel jft placing vds is equal to constant okay it is same as your n channel j fet with minute changes that is n structures have been changed to p p to n and the flow of direction will be same and see and here the negative volume will be taken in n channel so here it in p channel it will be taking for the positive value and this one is your vds is equal to constant okay why this uh, direction is also means here the holes are the majority carriers okay thank you good morning friends today we will discuss about the mosfet that is metal oxide semiconductor fet and it is also called as insulated gate field effect due to this si o2 that is this one is acting as a insulator okay so already we know that the mosfet can be divided into form that is enhancement mode as well as depletion mode mosfet that enhancement mode in short form is represented e mosfet and for depletion it is represented as a d mosfet okay now see this one is your basic structure of your how your mosfet look like so okay as already we know that it is having three terminal that is your the first part from the left that is it will be having one notch here okay that will be a front view okay the first part is now the first leg is known as your source in the middle leg is known as your drain and the third leg is known as your gate and it is been fixed source drain and gate okay next so this one is the first will go through your e mosfet that is your enhancement mode mosfet okay so this one is the basic structure we will be having p type substrate when the impurities are the high impurities of uh, diffusion take place then it will be forming a source and drain regions and for the gate regions will be adding through the polysilicon and this one is the structure for the basic or the constant structure it is known as your sio2 that is your silicon dioxide and this one is acting as your insulator okay now how this basic structure is formed just for your reference first we will be having a p type substrate or the semiconductor material okay next when we add up a high impurities so by using the diffusion process we will just adding up for your high impurities of a n impurities so that will be forming your source and drain region okay next it will be lied by your si o2 or both p substrate as well as your n substrate and this one is acting as your insulate okay next so source and drain is over next we will form the gate region so this gate region is formed by using the polysilicon okay so this one is the basic structure that is p substrate take n impurities will be adding highly duped n impurities will be added to get the source and drain and this will be added. okay next for the connection purpose what we will do is we will just etch the unwanted materials etching means removing the unwanted materials 
okay and that filling with with the metal okay just for the connection purpose we'll just take this with the metal so this one is acting as my source drain and gauge okay so this one is the basic structure what it will be looking so this one is the basic structure how will be formed okay next next what okay so this one is just the basic so now what we'll do is we just apply the voltage source between the source and the terminal with the drain source to drain so we'll just apply the source to drain that minus plus negative terminal as well as the positive terminal okay so the two diodes are being formed from this two source to s and plus two d that is from the so this one is the reverse biased diode and this one is your forward biased diode okay so there will be a flow of so it is a reverse bias there will be a flow of uh, current from drain to source okay and but initially it will not be having any since only the voltage source is given to the source to drain there will be no flow of electrons between the drain to source okay so what we'll do is we'll just apply the voltage source between the gate that is the vgs to the source minus plus and it will be just variable will be just taking okay when the voltage source is applied between the gate and the source okay what will happen next is now the channel the electrons or whatever it is in a piece of state will all gather together here okay so there will be a flow of electrons between drain to source okay so and this will be attracted here due to this gate region okay so there will be a flow of when the voltage source is applied between this vgs then there will be a flow of electrons between drain to source okay and this one part is known as the induced n channel or induced channel that is all the electrons are being gathered here and there will be flow of electrons as the voltage polarity increases the drain the current flow of direction also will be just increase okay see here now initially so this one if i take okay initially if we take id and next this one will be my vds then at the one volt it will be just when vgs is equal to one volt so this will be my vgs is equal to vgs is equal to three volts so in this fashion as the voltage increases the flow of current will also be going on increasing okay so this one is the structure what we people will be just getting okay so the, in this fashion also we can just represent or in this fashion also we can just represent the voltage sources okay okay next first what will be test of uh, semiconductor substrate will be taken next highly doped impurities will be just added for this structure okay to form the source and drain region next oxide load is placed and it is acting as a covers the entire so it is just for the base structure next gate region is formed by adding the poly silicon next for the operation what we'll be doing is as dc voltage is been applied between source negative and the positive terminal okay the pn junction is formed and the positive terminal it is a reverse biased and from this part it is known as the reverse bias as it is already explained okay no significant current will be flowing from drain to source but tiny current flow due to source will be uh, where the minority carriers no channel is formed between the drain and source okay with before the connection from source to drain there will be no flow of connection okay when the vgs is been given at that time only the the voltage will be just applied to the gate terminal next the minority free channel form to form the channel n okay is uh, next the accumulated here the accumulated electron is totally depend upon what is the how much the gate voltage is being varied okay next next the width of the n channel depends on voltage applied at gate terminal more than the applied greater the width of the channel okay and this part is known as your induced channel where is the flow of electrons will be there that one is known as your induced channel and the last one is this one is known as your enhancement type mosfet if we connecting a positive terminal to the gate and negative terminal to the source then it is known as your enhancement type 
this one okay and this one is the characteristic graph of a n channel e mosfet that is the enhancement mode as the voltage is increases the current also been increased okay okay next we'll just go through your depletion type mosfet that is your d mosfet the connection is all same as what you people have done in a enhancement mode mosfet only the voltage source is been changed there the gate curve in terminal was been connected with the positive terminal here it is been changed to negative nerve terminal and the source is with the positive terminal only we are talking about only the vgs okay the vds will be same that is the minus 2 plus and all the characteristics have been that is the p type substrate is been taken so the diffusion is been added up okay with the high impurities to form the source and drain regions okay next for the connection purpose it uh, all the uh, etched etching process has been taking place and it is filled with the metal for the connection so you form the source and drain region so okay in the same fashion for the gate region the polysilicon will be added up once again it is just gone for the etching process and the melt is filled with the metals to form the connections okay so it only the thing is what the changes from depletion to enhancement mode is or enhancement to mode is only the positive terminal has been changed to negative and negative to the you know, vg yes okay next the flow of connector so as it has been changed to this the flow of correction will be formed from source to drain okay and here all the holes the majority carriers are being just collected here as we go on in decreasing the vgs voltage that is the minus 2 plus that is minus 1 minus 2 like this then the elect the holes will be just accumulated here and the flow of direction will be what from source to drain okay and this part is known as the depleted region where the all the drainage will be just accumulated and this part is known as the depleted channel okay next see here Next here the region below the source to drain though with the current can flow. If a negative voltage is applied from gate to source, negative charge on the gate induces are equal amount of positive charge holes on the holes on the oxide layer. Okay. As I already told that when the positive source of the gate negative voltage has been applied towards the goals and it will be going on decrease, then what will happen is all the holes with the majority curls are accumulated here at the channel. Okay. Next, this results in recombination of holes with electrons in the channel and reduce the number of free electrons available. Okay, next, as VGS is applied more negative, drain current reduces current ID. If positive potential is applied instead negative, the device acts as an okay. As we go on decreasing the increasing the negative voltage, that is VGS is minus one minus two, the current will be just going on reducing okay see vgs is equal to zero volts it's in a constant next vgs is minus one it is still reduced if you just vgs minus two the current is also reduced okay if you just go on in decreasing increasing the vgs where that is minus two minus three minus four then the current also will be just reduced okay so now this is the important part in this means we will be just forming both enhancement as well as depletion region so at the vgs is equal to zero what will happening is so it will be in a constant and above volt is known as the enhancement mode and VGS will be if we are giving a negative voltage then it is known as your depletion type okay so this depletion type also can be obtained for both in a depletion and a enhancement mode okay now just go through the symbol of if the flow direction of the electrons is inside then it is known as your n channel is MOSFET and if the flow direction is outside then it is known as your enhancement mode P channel MOSFET okay so already we know that if the flow direction towards the gate is then it is the N channel if it is outside from from gate terminal then it is known as your P channel okay now we'll just solve some of the problems okay just so it is same as your what the problem we have calculated now yeah? if it is okay just for a D MOSFET ID is equal to what 10 milliamps at which is equal to minus 1 volt and determine VP at ID is equal to also all these are the given values and already we know that formula that id is equal to idss into 1 minus vgs by vp whole square and this one is the standard formula we just introduced the whatever the value that is id is equal to 10 where id is 15 milliamps 1 minus and vgs is equal to what minus 1 volt so we should calculate for the vp so vp what we'll be getting is minus 4.45 volts after calculation okay next 
and this one is to next for a d mosfet id is equal to what the same thing 10 milliamps and vp is equal to minus 8 volts the so first what it should be is is this an n channel or a p channel d mosfet okay next to calculate the id for vg is equal to minus 3 volts and that id is equal to vg is equal to plus 3 volts okay the first thing what you should determine whether it's a n channel or a p channel okay so this n channel or a p channel is depend upon the vp value if vp value is negative then it is a n channel if the vp value is a positive then it is a p channel so in this problem vp is what minus weight so what they are given is the solution is the given demand has a negative terminal that therefore it is a n channel d mosfet okay and the next part is what at vgs is equal to what minus 3 volt we should calculate for this id so already with the same formula that is id is equal to ids is into 1 minus vgs by vp okay just put the values and get the value for your id so at id is equal to minus, at vgs minus 3 volt the id what we are getting is 3.91 milliamp and vgs plus 3 volts will be getting it as 18.9 a midi good morning friends today we will just go for your cmos cmos that is complementary metal oxide semiconductor c represents your complementary complementary means it will be having both pft as well as nft or p mosfet as well as n mosfet it's a combination of both pft as well as nft initially what you have previously cross checked is of the mosfet is p channel mosfet or a n channel mosfet separately now it is a combination of both pft as well as nft okay so this one is known as your complementary metal oxide semiconductor okay before that first we'll just cross check with your p FET. okay so this one is your mosfets if the flow of direction is outside towards the source then it is known as a p mosfet okay in the same fashion it can be represented in a pft with what it is having three terminals gate source and drain with the bubble with the bubble if the bubble is there then it represents your p FET and PFT is on when input is only zero or low. So this PFT will be in an on state whenever will be giving the input zero towards the gate region. Okay, because always the input will be given at gate input and at the drain will be taking it as output and at the source will be giving it a power supply that is vgd or vss depending upon what if it is a pft then we'll be giving always a vdd and if it is a nft we are always giving a vss that is the ground okay next the same passion for nft nft means says if the flow of direction is inside towards the gate the flow of electron then it is known as your n mosfet in the same fashion it is represented with the gate without a bubble if there is no bubble then it is acting as a n FET. and when the nft is on when the input is one okay pft is on when the input is zero and n or uh, nft is on when input is high that we should be giving the input at the two gate regions okay next so just this one is the complementary metal oxide so cmos of a inverter Okay, inverter will be having only one input and one output. Always the inverter has only one input and one output. Now we'll just cross how the connections are being made. Okay, so, yeah. so this one is my CMOS inverter. Okay, always the inverter or any of the CMOS things first will be having a demarcation line. So it defi it uh, demarcation line. It defines where the PFT, sh PFT should be placed and NFT should be. So this differentiate the PFT as well as NFT. Okay, and always the PFT should be placed above the demarcation line. Always the PFT should be placed above the demarcation line since it's a logical high device. Okay, and uh, NFT should be always placed below as it is a logical low device okay next we will just represent the gate so a source and drain and the so this one is my source gate drain and source okay initially in the first jft what it was mentioned the always the source should be placed for a below for the nft and source should be placed for the above okay so this one is for my 
n f t and this one is for p f t okay just our place one and p f t and one f t okay as the, it is a invert okay as we know that invert is having only what one input so input should be given at the gate region so i'll just shorten these two inputs and i'll just give the input as v in. okay next and the at the, at the drain the output should be taken as we know that we'll short on these two and we'll take the output that is v out v in and v out okay next the two reasons have been what sources so always we know it's a logical high device at the source is to giving the vdd and at the uh, nft is a logical low device the source should be connected with the what the ground so this one is the structure what it will be looking like getting so this is the structure what it is been looking v in v out vdd vss and the two so this is the structure how you got this so this one is the okay next we'll just form the two table so as we know that v in so we'll just take the pfet in fet and this one is my v so this one is the table okay we'll just check what will be the operation and how which one which device will be on it which device will be when v in is equal to zero getting when v in is equal to zero so already we know that when v in is equal to zero our when the input is zero my pft will be on okay so when the v in is equal to zero p if if it is on so obviously my n f t will be in a off state okay when v is equal to zero my p f t is on and n f t is off if there is off means there will be no connection between the v out and the output okay when it is on means it is connected with the v d d the output is there is a flow of direction so if the capacitor will be there and it will be charged to high because the output v d d means it will be represented as one so we'll be getting the output as one okay next when the v in is equal to one when v in is equal to one my p f t will be in a off state and n f t will be in a on state okay so an on state means there will be a connection okay and here the p f t will be off state means there will be no connection okay when the capacitor is charged and that will be discharged to the ground ground means it will be what p f t will be in off state and n f t will be on state and the output is zero okay so this one is the what the table for your c mos inverter if the input is 0 the output is 1 if the input is 1 the output is 0 so this one is the operation of your cmos inverter okay just for our reference what will be the transfer characteristic so this one will be my voltage and this one will be my current okay so if the input is so this one is my voltage and this one is the current if the input is 0 what will happen if the input is 0 the output is high okay so the output is what here i'll be representing so here it will be what 0.5 and this one will be by one okay so if the input is zero the output is one and we'll be getting the transfer characteristics like this one if the input is zero the output is high and when the input is uh, input is one the output is low okay at this point my p is on and n is off and at this point p is off and n is on okay so this one is the considering all the transfer characteristics of this one okay next so why are you going for this cmos cmos means so it is having a low operating power levels and it is having a high input impedance as well as it is having a fast switching speeds okay thank you good morning friends Today we will just discuss about SCR that is silicon control rectifier. Okay, silicon control rectifier is a switching device and it is used in a power control devices. Okay, as we know that silicon is a semiconductor material and we also know that rectifier is what it converts AC to DC supply. Okay, when we give the voltage across the silicon, then we can control the AC to DC supply. So it is in common it is known as a silicon controlled rectifier. Okay. And so this one is a structure or a basic structure of your 
SCR. Okay, and it is having a four layer, and it is a four layer PNPN devices with three terminals that is anode, cathode, and gate. That is PNPN are the four region P region, N region, P region, N region. Okay, and it is having three terminals at the above part. The positive terminal is known as the P region is known as the anode, and the below the end region is known as your cathode and near below uh, nearby the end region wherever the p is there that part is known as your gate region and this one is having the three junction j1 j2 and j3 okay and so this one is a schematic symbol of your scr so it is just like your normal diode that is anode and it is having cathode along with one gate the terminal that is your gate current IJ and from anode it will be a gate current IA okay so these are the two okay another thing so to make the uh, SCR on okay to make the SCR on along with the anode to cathode voltage source we should give a certain amount of gate voltage to make the transistor on and another condition is what that is junctions J1 J2 and J3 or should be in a forward bias. The junction J1, J2, and J3 should be just forward bias. Okay. To make SCR on, anode and must K anode and cathode must be connected with voltage source plus um, positive and negative respectively. Along with that, one gate voltage also should be applied. Anode current I and gate current IG. Another thing that all the junctions J1, J2, and J3 should be in forward bias. Then only your SCR that is silicon controlled resistor will conduct okay now we'll just go through the working of a SCR okay so working of SCR it is having three conditions that is forward blocking mode or region forward conduction region and reverse blocking region in that first we'll just go through the forward blocking mode okay the same structure what are done the basic structure that it is having the PNPN regions anode display cathode and the gate so we're just giving a voltage source across the anode and cathode and for anode will just connect it with the positive source and for cathode we are just giving the negative source okay and it is having the three junctions j1 j2 and j3 now we'll cross check which are the junctions which are in forward bias and which are in reverse biased okay now so that's the junction g1 sorry j1 that is anode plus is there and the negative is connected towards the n region so it is forward bias at the junction j2 the plus is connected towards the n and for positive it is negative so it is reverse biased so j j2 is reverse bias and once again for j3 the positive connected to the p terminal and negative is connected towards the n terminal so it is also a, for, a forward bias that is junction j1 and j3 are forward bias j2 is reverse bias but what is the condition what is stated that j1 j2 and j3 all three conditions should be forward bias then only your scr conduct so scr here doesn't conduct okay next we'll just go through the now we'll just go through the characteristics of forward blocking mode so here the forward voltage reverse voltage forward current and reverse current if you just go on increasing the voltage a small amount of current will be just flowing through it okay if you hold increase uh, further then also it will not increase even if increasing the vf okay so this one is known as your forward so from this point to this one that is a small current is known as your forward blocking mode okay next the second condition that is your forward condition mode in a forward conduction mode okay that is your FCM okay what so it is the same as your previous structure that anode and cathode is being connected with the voltage source here the extra part is what here we are just connecting a voltage source towards the gate region that is the anode is connected that is the plus mark is given to the gate and negative is being connected towards the cathode so this one is the structure of your forward conduction mode okay why you are making this because in that structure now j1 and j3 already we know that it is in a forward bias for g for the gate region that is at the junction j2 we should make this j2 is also a forward 
biased for that reason we are just connecting a gate voltage that is a VG towards the gate region so it makes your J1, J2 and J3 both in the forward bias condition so here the SCR conducts okay so this one is the transfer characteristics of uh, the further part okay so already we know this about this FVM for blocking mode that is a small current have been break and so this one the dash lines are known as your voltage drop across this voltage because here whatever the applies voltage will be that will be a drop what will be getting and uh, starts conducting the current linearly okay and this one is known that your SCR is on okay next in the reverse blocking mode Okay, so what we are doing here is from the same previous structure what we are taking the PNPN. So here we are just changing the voltage source that is so negative to anode we are just getting and positive to a cathode. Okay, we are just changing the reverse voltage and we are just giving a reverse voltage. Now what will happen? So J1 and J3 will be in reverse wire because the negative is connected to a P terminal and positive is connected towards the end. So J1 will be in a reverse bias. Since negative is connected to end region and positive is connected to power, J2 will be in forward bias. In the same fashion, negative is connected towards the P region and the positive is connected to the end. So J3 will be in reverse bias. So yeah, J1 and J2 reverse bias and J2 and J2 is forward bias. So already we know that if all the three junctions are being in forward bias, then only your SCR conduct or else it is doesn't conduct. So in this case, reverse blocking mode, your SCR is not conducting so here we are direct a reverse breakdown voltage will be taking place and this part is known as your avalanche breakdown okay so current is independent of applied voltage we goes on increasing reverse voltage junction breakdown will occur and SCR conducts high current so this part is known as your high current or else, all, or else it is known as your avalanche breakdown okay so the three characteristics are been represented in a characteristics of this SCR so separately it has been explained now with the whole thing it has been explained in what forward condition mode forward blocking mode as well as reverse blocking mode okay see here if you go on increasing so this one is the leakage current the small current and this one is the conductor of the second that is forward conduction state that is in a on state okay see here. so what will happen if ig3 the ig2 is greater than ig1 is greater than ig0 so these are the things what will be getting and vf0 vf1 vf2 so these are all the forward blocking region and this one is your reverse blocking region and this part is known as your reverse leakage current that is vbr and vbs and this one is the i state and this one ih is the holding current so what is this holding current holding current means if it is the value of current below which SCR switches from conduction state to forward blocking region okay next forward and reverse region say these are the regions corresponding to open circuit condition for the SCR which block the flow of current from anode to cathode so these are the first condition as well as the third next that is the reverse breakdown voltage that is the main thing what it is means is VBR so this one is what avalanche breakdown takes place and rises the current abruptly so this part is known as the avalanche breakdown and this part is known as the, the current is been flowing abruptly okay so this one is a simple explanation of your SCR okay SCR means it is having four terminal the four junctions PN PN and three connections anode cathode and so and this part is known as the gate and so this one is the characteristics mm -hmm. next in SCR we will be having a true transistor model of a SCR. So same structure what you consider for your SCR that is PN, PN uh, uh, regions, next P is connected with the anode K, uh, and N region is connected with the below part cathode and the gate regions. Okay, now what we will do is and uh, as, uh, as usual we will be having three junctions J1, J2 and J3. Now what we will do, uh, do is we will just divide this part since it is a two transistor we try to divide the middle part that is we will just what we will do is so one structure will be what your P and P and another structure will be what? N, P, N. Okay. If we divide a middle region of N and P in two halves, two transistors of form that is connected to each other, that is P and P and N, P, N. See here. This is the thing. What if we divide it, what we'll be getting is P and P and N, P, N. P and P and P and anode and gate will be just connected and the uh, N, P, N will be having a cathode as well as the thing. Okay. So this one is the schematic. So if we represent by using the if it is how it will be just transistors how it will be just okay. so anode is there cathode is there and the gate region is common to both the things for 
collector as well as the base region okay so this one is the thing so this one is the equivalent structure what you just form in return in a small part first see here so this one you will be taking it as p n p so this one is your transistor one so the anode is from anode you are just connecting to a base and the collector so emitter base and collector and the gate region is being connected to a transistor two that is your n p n so the same structure what is this one is part so this one you have just taken here okay see here the base is common to and is connecting as a collect okay the gate region is being connected now we will just give the what the voltage source to just work so what anode and cathode is being connected with the load resistor rl along with the voltage so that is the voltage across the anode and cathode vak as well as we are just giving a gate voltage towards the gate region that is your vg okay and now so the what is the representation of the current flow that is collector current we are just giving as the transistor that is ie1 the base current ib1 and next is your collector current that is your ic1 so these are the thing for the transistor t1 next ic2 that is the collector current ib2 as a transistor base current uh, that is the transistor 2 bit base current next trans uh, emitter current for for transistor 2 that is your ie2 so this one is the structure okay so rl is the volt voltage vak is voltage across the anode and cathode and vtg is your gate voltage okay next see here. now is the condition that ib1 is equal to i say the same current is being going out towards the collector Connect. Okay. Next, the base of T1 is connected to a collector of T. So, what will be representing that? IB1 is equal to IC2. Okay. Next. Next, we will just give the voltage. So, here we will be just going through the two cases. In the first question, case is that when we take the gear voltage as 0, then VG is equal to 0. Okay. When VG is equal to 0, obviously the IG will be 0. Okay, if I G is equal to zero means the base current of a second transistor that is I B two is also zero. I B two is also zero. Okay, see I B two is also zero. Next, since I B two is zero, the collector current I C two will also be zero. Okay, since I I B two is zero, I C two will also be zero. And always another thing, so I B means it is a input current and I C means it is a output. Current. So the transistor across this transistor will be zero because IB2 is also zero as well as IC2 will also be zero. See IC2 is zero output of transistor T2 is zero. Okay. Now since IB already we know that IB1 is equal to IC2. IB1 is equal to IC2. But IC2 is what here zero. So IB1 is also zero. Since IB1 is equal to zero, IC2 is also zero. If IC IB1 is zero, means obviously the collector current of a transistor IT1 is also IC1 will be zero. So here IC2 is also zero, IC1 is also zero. Output of T1 is zero. Okay, so both at transistor T1 is also zero, T2 is also zero. Now if VG is equal to zero, IC2 is equal to zero, IC1 is equal to zero, then transistors T1 and T2 are off. Hence we can tell that SCR is off. As we have told in the previous normal SCR, if gate voltage is not applied, the SCR will be in a off state. That is, junction J1 and J2 and J3 will not, all the three conditions will not be in a, okay, in a forward bias. Next, if case 2, if VG is giving a positive voltage, for this VG we are just giving a positive voltage. It might be anything, plus 1, plus 2 or anything. So, we are just giving a positive voltage so it will provide the gate current ig a little bit of gate current will be just going down so if the gate current is there then ib2 will also will be having a small flow of current if ib2 is having then ic2 will also be having a current see here ic2 is also base current is being produced then the collector ic2 also will be produced that is ig2 is equal to ib2 is equal to what the ic2 so the current ig is equal to ib2 plus is equal to IC2. So the transistor T2 is in a on state. Then if IC2 is 0, uh, sorry, IC2 is having a positive value, then obviously the IB1 will also be having a positive value because IB1 is equal to IC2. If IB1 is having a positive value, obviously the IC1 will also be having a positive 
value see here if ic2 is equal to ib1 is equal to ic1 is equal to positive also so your t1 is also on okay next so if gate voltage v is equal to zero then your transistor is in a off state if vg is giving a positive voltage, it might be one volt two volt or three volt or five volt so your transistor is in a on state so if this one is your two transistor model of a ACR that is if you get VG is equal to 0 transistor ACR is in a off state if VG is giving a positive voltage then your ACR is in a on state